You can also see this feature if you look at near bottom nitrate concentrate. Okay. So initially there is zero. And then after this example, it shows you what happens after 60 days of continuous wind forcing, you can see a two pathways of um, nitrate uh, enriched water upwelled into the Arafura Sea. Here on the left, these are the model simulations. This is near the bottom. You see it near the bottom. It's not at the surface, near the bottom. What happens at the surface, I'll show you on the next slide. So you can see there's one branch moves into the, uh, to the east and one into that region of the northwestern Arafura Sea. And here are some observations from uh, 50 years ago observations where you can see nutrient concentrations, the same um, magnitude. Okay, you can see the two different pathways of nutrient enriched water coming in. And this is the undercurrent. Okay, so you have an undercurrent that is created from that wind because you have shallow water surface and bottom Ekman layers overlap you have a little bit of a rotational effect in here and that might explain why you actually get uh, the flow moving into the northwestern this branch here and more moving into the northwestern Arafuras. okay and if you look at surface concentrations it takes a while it's a slow process takes a while until the nutrient uh, rich bottom water is actually up well to the surface and i show you three snapshots here from the left after 20 days middle after 40 days and the last one after 60 days you can actually see the upwelling happens yeah, within on, on a time scale of of uh, two to three months or one to two months, and this is is the the source or the um, critical ingredient that you need for the for the plankton blooms uh, to develop. Okay, just a little summary. The northwestern Arafura Sea is an area of very large primary productivity. Gigantic phytoplankton blooms in the northwestern Arafura Sea are the result of the Lee effect that drives a nutrient rich undercurrent into the region. Okay. Phytoplankton blooms develop slowly on time scales of one to three months. Okay, and this you need to understand the definition of shallow water in order to understand this, this process. Classical Ekman layer theory fails to explain these features here in shallow water. First of all, the, the, the true depth is relatively shallow. It's only uh, 50 to 100 meters deep. But on the other hand, it's also located closer to the equator, which also weakens the, the Coriolis effect. So that was the first part of this lecture. Let's have a look at the second part.